everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're going to go ahead and cover my top 10 winter fragrances of 2016. This is the designer list. I love doing these videos. I do them every year uh, and I like to do them about a month before the actual season technically starts off. So November 21st rush, roughly is when I like to start doing these videos. And uh, this list I'm pretty excited for just because I am, uh, I, I really do like dark fragrances. I've always loved dark fragrances and it's only been recently that I've been digging the uh, lighter fragrances more just because I've gotten better fragrances as my fragrance journey has progressed. But I digress. This video is about my winter fragrances. Now quick things before we get started. Uh, the first thing is that this is my list. This is nobody else's list. Uh, so these are the picks that I uh, will be wearing for the winter. Now, the second major thing uh, to notice is, what do I consider winter? In I live in New York. I live in an area that gets pretty cold in the winter. It gets pretty hot in the summer, but at this point, it's roughly below like 35 degrees Celsius and lower. So, that's what I consider winter. Without any further ado, let's get right into the list. Starting up at number 10 is a fragrance that I've had for a while. The fragrance we're talking about is Midnight in Paris. Now, I love the bottle for this. It's very beautiful. It's very well put together. I like how it's got the metal on the outside, Midnight in Paris. But again, the real purpose of this sucker is really to get at the juice. Now, this is a powdery scent. It's a powdery scent. It's got um, a very sophisticated note to it. It's a cheap fragrance, so if you look around, you can find this very cheap. Uh, it, this is one fragrance that I generally tend to wear when I'm going out and I'm in an upscale event. I, for some reason, it just fits the upscale event persona to me, so that's kind of when I wear this sucker. So Midnight of Paris at number 10. At number 9 is a new fragrance that I haven't reviewed yet that you should see a review coming in the next two weeks or so. Uh, we are talking about Encre Noir à l'extrême. Now, this fragrance is... It's an interesting fragrance. It smells very similar to the original Encre Noir, only this goes a little bit of a darker vibe and has a little bit less of a vetiver vibe to it. This is one fragrance that I like to wear also on a night out, but this is not like an upscale fragrance for me at least. I generally tend to wear this one if I'm going out to a bar, if I'm going out to a club. Sorry about the honking, but that's generally when I tend to wear this fragrance. So, number nine, Encre Noir à la Extreme. Next one, at number eight, is a fragrance from the house of Tom Ford. We are talking about Tom Ford's Noir Extreme. Again, I've gone through a couple fragrances that I wear going out, and this one is no exception. The one difference with this one is I generally like to wear this one when it's um, at work, basically. Uh, this can double as a work fragrance. It has a little bit of a safe quality to the point where I found I've begun to wear it more and more to work on that aspect, okay? So Tom Ford's Noir Extreme. Number six is a play fragrance, and it's one that's made my list a couple times. We're talking about 24 Gold. Now, 24 Gold is a fragrance that I was hating on when I first heard of it. I was like, a fragrance that's based off of the show 24, how good can it possibly be? I have to say, I was completely wrong because it definitely is a great fragrance. We're talking about raspberry, we're talking about this resin, and that combines and it gives it this very sweet, very powerful type of a scent. Now, because it's so playful, I don't wear it to work, I don't wear it in night out scenarios or anything like that. I wear this casually. When it's cold and I'm going outside, I wear this one and it works pretty well, all right? Uh, so 24 gold, scent story, from scent story at least. Uh, number six, sorry, I was counting off in my head there. Fragrance number six is from the house of Chanel. We've got Allure. Yes, Allure. I'm bringing this sucker back. This has come back from the dead in my collection. This is a apple pie-y kind of vibe to it. It's more on the light side, and this is one of the reasons why I chose this fragrance. Just because compared to my other winter fragrances, winter designer fragrances, this is definitely more on the light side. I love this. It gets compliments. I like to wear this one to work as well, too. This is one of my heavy hitters for work in the winter, and I will definitely be wearing it there. All right? Uh, so Allure, the original Allure from Chanel. Fragrance number five on the list is another light fragrance. This is probably my lightest fragrance that I'm going to be wearing this winter. We're talking about Terre de Hermes, uh, the original Terre de Hermes. Sorry about that. This is an earthy orange, like a bitter orange type of a smell, um, and it's got an earthy note to it. Absolutely fantastic. 
One of the things that uh, I choose to wear this one is definitely to work. I also like to wear this one out when going out, you know, to a club. Uh, I, if I don't want to be noticed, if I don't want it to be too heavy, if I know it's going to be hot, that's where I wear this one. So Terre de Hermes. Number four is from the House of Dior. This is a fragrance that has gotten many compliments in my day and still does. We are talking about Dior Alm Intense. I love this baby. This baby has been reformulated, so check your versions. I've got you know, other videos where I explore that, but either way, you can find out more information about that. This is the, uh, this is, this is Iris. It's lipstick. It's got this lipsticky vibe. I know that sounds weird. Give it a try. Um, it's, yeah. It's one that I like to wear, especially going out with friends nights out. That's where I wear Dior Homme Intense. Number three is from the house of Yves Saint Laurent. The fragrance is La Nuit de L'Homme. La Nuit de L'Homme, uh, man, this one, uh, what this fragrance really brings out, it's just done so well. This is like a lavender, it's a powdery, it's a sweet smelling scent. Um, it's very sophisticated, but at the same time, very approachable. It's really a marvel of a fragrance, and I love this fragrance. It's been reformulated. I have warned you right now, it's been reformulated. I still have the original version, so do some searching around if you can possibly get it. I've heard that it's been made weaker. Uh, I heard that it's you know kind of diluted a bit, but my version, it's a strong powerhouse, and it works well for the winter. I love this sucker. Uh, so La Nuit de Lo. Uh, number two on the list is from the house of... Terry Mugler, the fragrance we're talking <laughs> uh, Terry Mugler, sorry about that. We're talking about Pure Tonka. Pure Tonka, it's Tonka goodness, it's angel men, it's cookie, it's Tonka, it's just, you know, this sweet bean type of smell. Mmm, fantastic. This one, casual fragrance, I wear it to work as well too. This is probably the heaviest scent that I'll wear to work. Um, just because it really is a monster, but I really do like the projection and the aura that it gives, all right? So Pure Tonka at number two. And finally at number one, this is a surprising fragrance. This might be a surprise to most of you, uh, but not to me. This has been steadily increasing to the point where I really love this fragrance. I've had it for a while. We're talking about Le Mal from the house of Jean-Paul Gaultier. Yes, Le Mal. Oh, man. I originally started out not liking this fragrance. This is mint and it's, and it's lavender. Uh, it's a powdery mint and the lavender scent and when I originally tried it, I was just really turned off by that harsh uh, beginning. But I like the beginning now, and I really like the dry down for this. This envelops you in a scent that is just magical. I love Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Mans. I think this is a masterpiece. It is absolutely fantastic. I know it's an oldie, but it's a goodie from the designer line. All right, so number one is Le Mans. Let me know what your top 10 designer scents are. I'm always curious. I love to see what people are wearing. I went a little bit old school, but I kept some of the new ones in. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm feeling for the designer side. Keep an eye out for my uh, niche fragrance list that'll be coming up soon. Uh, and again, I'm always curious, so please just let me know what you guys are rocking for the winter or will be rocking for the winter. All right, thank you guys. Take care of yourselves and you guys have a great day.